and welcome to another episode of Ubar. In this week, I want to talk about API gateway security mechanisms. If you're interested in watching more content about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> Security is a topic that I know that you are super interested. I have created many videos on this topic before. I can link you a playlist here that you can go and check. But in most of those videos, you always ask for examples using AWS SAM because most of the examples I have created are with a serverless framework. So today I want to start a new series talking very specifically about API gateway security mechanisms, an updated version of what is available and using some as a way to show you examples. So the previous videos I have created, maybe they have a couple of years ago and a lot of these features were not available. So it's a good way to refresh. The first video that is this one, I will show you like the most important ways to secure API gateway and what tools API gateways bring. The most important ones, there are many. And this will be just a theoretical video, but in the next videos, I will just skip all the theoretical part because it's here and we will go directly to the examples. Most of the examples will be front and back end because usually you need the both communication. So I will be using Amplify in the front end and React. And then in the back end, I will be using SAM and I don't know, JavaScript and Cognito if needed or whatever um, service from AWS we are, we are using. But you will be seeing very practical examples. So let's get started with the API gateway security mechanisms. API gateway supports many different mechanisms for authentication and authorization. Some examples are AWS IAM roles and policies. In here, you can control who invokes your APIs. We are going to have a video on this topic in the future so you can see it more in detail. Lambda authorizers are Lambda functions that control access to API methods using a token authentication or a little bit more complex authentication on information that comes from the request. We are also going to see an example of this in future videos. Amazon Cognito user pools let you create customizable authentication and authorization for your APIs. You can use the user pools to control who can invoke the APIs. And we are also going to see an example of this in the future videos. Other mechanisms are cores. Uh, this is the cross-origin resource sharing that lets you control how your API responds to cross-domain uh, resource requests. I will be not making a video on cores, but you will see it in practice when we are working with the front end that we will need to define the cores so you can see how it works with some. Then client-side SSL certificates. We are not going to see an example of this, but if you're interested on in seeing about uh, things about certificates and things like that, let me know in the comments box below. And the same with AWS WAF, that is a kind of firewall that will protect your API gateway from common web exploits. This is something that I don't know if you're interested, I can make a video definitely on this, but it's not uh, in the scope of this season. Also, API gateways have different mechanisms to limit and track the usage that you're going to give to the APIs, to different authorizer people, authorizer uh, services and clients with usage plans and API keys. And I will be making a video explaining this with some as well. So let's look a little bit more in detail on the authorizers that we are going to uh, go uh, in more depth in the future videos. So we have the Lambda authorizer and authorizers are a security feature of API gateways and a way to validate that the request coming into API gateway is a valid one. So when a request comes into API gateway, the first thing that will happen is that it will get validated by the authorizer. And in this case, the authorizer is a Lambda and that means that the Lambda will execute some operation it can be a token validation, it can be a request validation, you need to specify that. And then if the validation goes uh, okay, it will pass the uh, request to the next Lambda, for example, that the one that is performing the business logic. And this is quite cool because if you have a cache and this um, client already have performed a uh, validation on this Lambda, is coming with the same uh, credentials, for example, then 
uh, it will be cached in API Gateway and this authorizer lambda will not run. But we, I will show you the caching in a second. So in here you can see all the options that you have when you create an authorizer from the API Gateway. And this is from the console. Uh, the first thing you need to choose if it's a Lambda or a Cognito user pool authorizer, we are going to check the Lambda now. And if it's a Lambda, the first thing you need to know is the ARN, the Amazon resource name for that Lambda, that is unique for every uh, resource in AWS, and you need to write it there. And you might need also to define some kind of role that API gateways will need to invoke this Lambda. Also then, uh, you need to define what is the payload. So it can be a token or a request. If it's a token, it's just one single token in the authorization header. And then if you're putting the token, you can uh, have some kind of regular expression to validate this token. So if the token doesn't pass the regular expression, the Lambda will not execute. So if you have a complex uh, token with some kind of um, format and somebody just pulled some shiverish, then the Lambda will not execute and you will be saving some money because all these Lambdas will cost you something. And then we have the request and there you can define which different parts of the request you are going to use in order to uh, validate the request. So you might use, I don't know, information from some string query or something in the headers or whatever and you need to specify it here and this will be passed to the Lambda and then the Lambda will be able to uh, verify that this uh, call is authorized and move on. The last part is the caching that I was talking before. Caching is very important, so you don't need to execute the Lambda every time a request comes in. If a user has already validated using, for example, the same token, then they will hit the cache and the Lambda will not execute. And you can decide if you have this cache and if you have it, how long the elements in the cache will live. Another type of authorizers is the Cognito user pools. To use the Amazon Cognito user pool with your API gateway, first you need to create an authorizer of the Cognito user pool type and then configure the method to use this authorizer. You need to configure a user pool and then you will need that information to put in your API gateway. So the flow goes that when a client wants to use the API, first they might be signed in into the pool with the user so they will use some way that cognito will sign in this user and it will obtain some kind of token or identity or something and then with that the uh, client can call the api gateway then the api gateway will um, validate that this token is valid for example with the cognito authorizer and if it's okay then it will proceed to call the lambda the last case of authorizers I was telling you in the beginning is the I am authorizers. In here we can allow an API caller to invoke an API and the API caller must have an I am policy that permits to uh, invoke this API. So the first thing you need to do is to set up the authorizer type to AWS I am. I will show you how to do that. And then the client that wants to uh, execute this API needs to get a valid role. For that, I will be showing you an example using Cognito uh, identity pools that we will uh, log in a user to a user pool. And then with the identity pools, we will get a role, a valid role. And then the, uh, we will execute API gateway with that uh, valid role. And then we will validate that everything is fine with the I am the identity and access managed service. And if everything is fine, then we are going to execute the Lambda. I will show you an example in the future videos about this. So that was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And in the next videos, you will expect to see very hands-on examples of using the different authorizers with SAM and the front end. So if you have any questions or things you would like to see in this season or in future seasons of security videos or some videos or Cognito videos or API gateway videos, let me know in the comment box below. I always try to make videos that you want to watch. So from here, I leave you around here. There are other videos from my channel that you might want to watch. And if not, I see you next week with another episode of FUBAR. Ciao, ciao.